I feel like I found a few hidden gems coming out in this last quarter of the year. There wasn't a lot besides like the big names that I found publishers were screaming about that they were releasing. So I really did some digging to find some new releases that I'm anticipated about for the last quarter of the year. This will be covering October, November, December. But with that being said, let's jump right on into the first month and start with October. October 1st, we have some big hitters coming out. The first one is Air by Saba Tahir. This series is one of my babies. I love this series. It is one of the YAs I will recommend to people trying to get into adult, for adults who want to read some YA. I love the Ember in the Ashes series. And Air is set in the same world, which is so exciting for me. This says it's going to be a story about love, legacy, and vengeance. We have an orphan, an outcast, a prince, and a killer who will bring an empire to its knees. We're following three POVs. I personally love a three POV story. We follow Aze, who grew up in the Kagari slums. An old tragedy fuels her need for vengeance, but it is the love of her people that propels her forward. But she's a little hot-headed, and one mistake leads her to the insufferable prince, where the embers of her wrath ignite. Banished from her tribe for an unforgivable crime, we follow Sersha, who is down on her luck tracker who speaks to the earth air and water to trace her marks she signs up to do a job to get a killer that has been hunting down children across the country all she has to do is carry out the job and get paid but then she falls for a charismatic and inconvenient fugitive who keeps getting in her way and quill is the crown prince of the empire nephew of the famed and venerated empire but he loathes to pick up the mantle when his aunt steps down as the son of the most hated emperor in the history of his people, ooh, better luck next time. He, better than anyone, understands that power corrupts. When a vicious new enemy threatens his people, he must ask himself if he can rise above his tragic lineage and be what his people need. Listen, this sounds so good, and I feel like the synopsis is paying ode to the Amber in the Ashes series a little bit. It says, get ready for a dark and breathless journey that will captivate readers and that may cost these young people their lives and their hearts, literally. Chef's kiss, I'm so freaking excited about this one. This is probably my most anticipated of the next three months. Also on October 1st, we have Influencer by Adam Caesar. I believe this is actually a repub, but don't quote me on that. Yes, this does say it's an Audible original, so it is a repub that's getting like a physical copy. Honestly, Adam Caesar can do no wrong. I've read three of his stories at this point and really liked them all. This one follows Adam Fortin, who has been ripped away. He's new in town. His parents have taken him from his old school to this school in the middle of his senior year, but they buy him a really nice car to say sorry. He doesn't care that showing up in this new car is not gonna look good for him. He's gonna use that to his advantage. He could be the new kid that doesn't care, doesn't try to blend in, has the new kid mystique, and he can use it all to his advantage. Then we follow Crystal, who carpools the same school in her friend's Trevor's beat-up car with their misfit bunch of friends. And when Aaron sits down at their table for lunch, Crystal realizes that he is not who he says he is, and she is going to uncover the truths, but also will she become a victim of his. In some ways, with the misfit group, I feel like it's giving me Scooby-Doo for some reason reading the synopsis, but that could be just me. Her friends begin to follow him one by one and Crystal wonders if she can protect them or if his influence is just too strong. Okay, not Scooby-Doo vibes when I read that last sentence, but very intrigued. Actually, it's giving me my best friend's exorcism vibes with that last line which had so much potential for me. The next one coming out on October 1st is The Boyfriend by Frieda McFadden. I actually have never read a Frieda McFadden, but this one caught my attention. Our main character's looking for the perfect man and he's looking for the perfect victim. Our main character is desperate. The men she brings home are just not great until her new boyfriend who is utterly perfect. He's charming, handsome, and works as a doctor at the local hospital. She swept away. Then there seems to be a lot of brutal murders of young women where the killer dates them first. Sydney should feel safe. She's dating the man of her dreams. But is this perfect man not as perfect as he seems? Because someone is watching her every move and if she doesn't get to the truth, she'll be the killer's next victim. A dark story about obsession and the things we'll do for love. I'm intrigued, okay? This sounds like a fun time, easy thriller. We're moving on to October 8th. And I have two releases. We have The Stars Are Dying by Chloe C. Pinaranda. This is a indie self-pub that got picked up traditionally. 
The addition of this is absolutely stunning. I put this on my list just because at one point I was really excited about it, but since then, I don't think this author is for me, but if this gets really good love, I will still pick it up. But like this edition is so stunning that I, I'm probably gonna be suckered into buying it anyways. Oh yeah, I'm reading the synopsis, which I didn't do. I just put this on the release and I truly don't think it's gonna be for me, but I think it's gonna be for a lot of you. The brightest star needs the darkest night. This is a world abandoned by the celestial guardians and our main character, knows the only safety is in seclusion under this tyrant king. She only has fragmented memories of her last five years. She's determined to discover more about her past, even if that means fleeing the cruel arms that hold her safe from the wicked vampires rumored to roam the land. But she stumbles across the mysterious knight and she soon realizes determination alone isn't gonna guard her heart. He lingers in the darkness that expands between the stars and soon she discovers her captor's wicked means of control weren't based on a lie to keep her under lock after all. In her desperation, she accepts Knight's help before she can decide if she might have set her allegiance to one of the bloodthirsty beings the people of her world fear. That makes no sense, but I think that there's a deal that she makes so that she doesn't have to make a deal with a bloodthirsty guy, but like, did she make a deal with a bloodthirsty guy? And really, she's just trying to find her answers to her past, and her bargain leads her to royal territory where trials are being hosted in which five humans compete for the cycle of safety from the vampire seeking blood, claiming souls, and savaging after dark. The idea of the vampires is really calling me in, but I don't like the amnesia trope but if people say this is good I will be picking up so some of you please pick it up when it comes out. Next up on that same day we have Blood of the Old Kings which is being translated to English I believe but was actually first published in 2016. This is an epic adventure in which three strangers journey through a vast empire that uses the power of dead wizards to conquer and subdue. I'm intrigued. Powered by the corpses of sorcerers the empire has conquered the world. It claims to have brought peace and stability to its conquered lands but some see that peace for what it is, a lie, and will give everything to fight against it. Loran is desperate for revenge after the Empire killed her family, and she's climbing a volcano to find a dragon so that she can make a dragon fang sword. Kane arrived in the Imperial capital, lost and orphaned. He only survived because a friend took him in, but his friend is found murdered, and he'll leave no stone unturned to find those responsible, even if it means starting a war. And Arianne's future has never been in question. Born a sorcerer, she'll be a power generator for the Empire empire upon her death. But when she starts to hear the voice of a powerful necromancer in her head, she realizes the only thing more terrifying than dying for the empire is never getting to truly live in the first place. When peace is a lie, there is power in truth. And as Lauren, Kane, and Arian hunt for answers in their own lives, any one of their small rebellions could be the stone that brings the empire toppling down. I love a revolution story, and I love a three POV story, and I love a dragon story. And I know the dragons are gonna be a small part because we're just making a dragon fang sword, but her having to get the fang, that sounds like an epic scene, and I'm really excited about this. Am I back in my epic fantasy era? Maybe with this one. October 15th, we have Rest Stop by Nat Cassidy. This is a short little story. I think it's even smaller than a novella. I think it's a short story about someone stranded in a rest stop. It's a horror story, so it's gonna get a little terrifying. I really know nothing about this one, but I'm very intrigued. A young musician finds himself locked inside a gas station bathroom in the middle of the night by an unseen assailant, caught between the horrors of the other side of the door and the horrors rapidly skittering down the walls inside. I'm so intrigued by this. It's 160 pages, so it is a novella. On that same day, we have You Better Watch Out by James S. Murray and Darren Wearmouth. This is a suspenseful serial killer thriller that leaves you wondering if Christmas really is the best time of the year. I feel like we need more like Christmas thrillers. I love a good Christmas thriller. Snowed in, something like that. And the cover for this, I love. 48 hours until Christmas, our main character Jessica Kane wakes up with blurred vision, ears ringing, and in excruciating pain. A gash in her head, blood running down her face. The last thing she remembers is going for a run and someone bonking her on the head. She wakes up in a small town with five other strangers who have similar stories to her. There's only one thing she needs to do. She needs to find out how to get out of here, but that becomes hard as someone starts killing them off one by one. The fenced in town is the killer's very own playground and there's nowhere left to hide. She better watch out. She could be next. Next up, we have October 22nd and we hopefully have the release of Bloodguard. I've put this in multiple new releases and then it keeps getting pushed. So I hope it actually comes out this time. 100 years, tens of thousands of gladiators, and today only one will rise. We follow Laith, 
of Grey who thought coming to the new land, volunteering to fight in the gladiator fights, was the only way to earn him enough money to save his dying sister, and that he had nothing else to lose. But he was wrong, and they took everything from him, his hope, his freedom, his very humanity. All he has left is his battle-scarred body, fueled by rage and hardened from years of fighting for the right to live another day. But then he meets Maeve, an elven royal who is everything he despises. Everything he should hate, until the alluring princess offers him the one thing he needs most, a chance to win the coveted title of Bloodguard, and so is freedom. But in a kingdom built on secrets and lies, hope doesn't come cheap, nor will his ultimate revenge. I'm very intrigued by this one. I feel like my hype for it has gone down a little bit because it keeps being pushed back, but I'm hoping that it's absolutely amazing when I finally get to read it. <laughs> Moving on to November, there's something in the water, November 19th. I have no other releases, but I have five releases on November 19th that I'm here to talk to you about. The first one is The Songbird and the Heart of Stone. I might have lied to you earlier when I said Air was my most anticipated release. This one is. I just actually have a neck alley arc, so I can read it sometime soon. Fingers crossed that my mood reading will let me. It's by Krista Broadbent. It is the third book in the Crimes of Nyaxia series. The first two were a completed duology following two romanticy characters, the Serpent of the Wings of Night and the Ashes of the Starkers King. We're following a new protagonist and her new love interest in this third book. We know who it is. It's Mish, who we read from in the first books. And I'm very, very excited to see where the story goes. I know nothing else about this because it is a third book. I don't really want to tell you a lot, but I know we're all equally hyped and excited about this. If you have not read The Serpent of the Wings of Night yet, please do. I have a feeling you have to read those to read this because it is book three, even though they're gonna be three duologies within this entire series. And then I have The Serpent and the Wolf by Rebecca Robinson. Perfect for fans of Raven Kennedy and Thea Gwanzin. So The Hurricane Wars and Plated Prisoner. It's a thrilling romancy debut combining high stakes, political intrigue, and a steamy slow burn enemies to lovers romance. All her life, Vasa Kozar has been sharpened into a blade. After losing her mother, which was her only remaining parent, to a dark magic that has since awakened with in her, Vasa is certain that death is near. But so is her merciless brother who wants to eliminate Vasa because she is a threat to his crown. In one last political scheme, he marries her off to the reed of Myra, a ruthless foreign ruler, in hopes that he can use her death as a rallying cry to finally invade Reed's nation. All Vasa has to do is die, but she's desperate to live. And she enters her new marriage with every intent to escape it. But to her surprise, Reed offers her a deal, help him win the votes to rise in power and she can walk away free. In exchange, she will share his knowledge about the dark magic running through her veins. The proposal may be too good to refuse, yet Vasa and Reed's undeniable attraction threatens to break the rules of their arrangement. As her brother's lethal machinations take form everything is at stake. Vasa must learn to trust her new husband, but how can she, especially when their perfect political marriage begins to feel like the real thing? I love an arranged marriage. I love an enemies to lovers. I'm very excited. Like, arranged marriages, I feel like I need to read more of them because I feel like I really like them. I love that they're forced to be together. They're kind of like forced to make a deal, forced proximity, things like that. I'm really excited about this one and I had seen it nowhere so I'm really excited that I had to do some digging because this is one of those like hidden gems I was talking about. Like I didn't know about this. It has a 4.4 currently and 100 reviews. I feel like that's pretty good. Next up on this day we have The Half King by Melissa Landers. Another one that I think has been pushed. Not a lot is actually out about the synopsis. It just says Beauty and the Beast meets the Sandman in this all new scorching hot new adult fantasy from Melissa Landers. In a world where the every firstborn child of the noble houses bears a curse, only one heretic cult might hold the answers to breaking them. That's all we know. But for some reason I'm just intrigued. Beauty and the Beast meets Sandman. Comps get me. I'm a comp girly. I love to comp books to other things and the comps really do get me. So I'm intrigued by this one. I mean, it's a Red Tower book. It's going to be pretty first edition. I'm probably going to get it. So I'm excited for it. After that, we have The Servant of Earth by Sarah Hawley. In the underground fey realm, only the strongest and most ruthless have power, but a young human woman forced into a life of servitude is about to change everything. I keep saying I'm over fey romancy and then fey romancy comes out and I'm like, please give me. Kenna Heron is best known in her village for being a little wild. Some say half feral, but she'll need every ounce of that ferocity to survive 
captivity to the cruel fae court. Trapped as a servant in the fairy's underground kingdom, Kenna must help her new mistress undertake six deadly trials, one for each branch of magic, fire, earth, light, void, illusion, and blood. If she succeeds, her mistress will gain immortality and become the heir to the earth house. If she doesn't, the punishment is death for both mistress and servant. Mm. We don't love to see that. Poor girl does nothing besides owe her life to people and she's murdered for it, for their incapabilities. With no ally but a sentient dagger of mysterious origins. A sentient dagger? I'm intrigued. Kenna must face monsters, magic, and grueling physical tests, but worse dangers wait underground. And soon Kenna gets caught up in a secret rebellion against the sadistic fairy king. When her feelings for the rebellion leader turn passionate, Kenna must decide if she's willing to risk her life for a better world and a chance at happiness. Surviving the trials and overthrowing a tyrant king will take cunning courage and an iron will. But even that may not be enough. Listen, I'm intrigued. Rebellion, trials, sentient dagger, caught me curious. And lastly, on this day, we have The Last Hour Between Worlds by Melissa Caruso. This is an author that I keep adding to my TBR. Her concepts sound so cool, but I never end up reading her books. So I just have a list of them that I wanna read and I really should get to them to see if like she works for me. Follow a star investigator and her rival as they journey through layers of reality to save the world as they know it in this whip smart adventure fantasy about rival guilds, reality bending magic, and an unexpected mystery. I personally love a murder mystery or a mystery in general in my fantasy book, so I'm intrigued. Kimbrel Thorne is spending a few hours away from her newborn and she's determined to enjoy the party, no matter what. But when the guests start dropping dead, Kim has no choice but to get to work. She's a member of the Guild of Hounds after all, and she can't help picking up the scent of trouble. She's not the only one, her professional and personal nemesis, burglar Rika Nunsuch is on the prowl. There's a mysterious grandfather clock that sends them down an echo every time it chimes. In each strange new layer of reality, time resets and a sinister figure appears to perform a blood-soaked ritual. As Ken and Rika fall into increasingly macabre versions of their city, they'll need to rely on their wits and each other to unravel the secret of the clock and save the city. I think it's a sapphic romance, but I could be wrong about that. Do not quote me on that. But I'm intrigued by this. I mean, it sounds interesting. It sounds different than other things I've read. And I do love a good like mystery plot line. So I am excited. Hopefully this will be the one that I try from her. We can move on to December. I do not have a lot of books for December. I have one on December 3rd, which is Blacklight Born, which is the third book in the Combat Code series by Alexander Darwin. This is a repub. This was an indie series that was picked up traditionally and has just been published with new covers and some editing and stuff. I've only read the first book and I really loved Combat Codes, so I am excited for this third installment, but I don't got a lot to say about it. If you have not read Combat Codes, I think it's fun please do. But another one that I'm really intrigued by is A Cruel Thirst, which is set to release December 17th. It's by Angela Montoya. A fledgling vampire and a headstrong vampire huntress must work together against their better judgment to rid the world of monsters in this irresistible romantic fantasy. Carolina Fuentes has always wanted to join her family in hunting down the bloodthirsty monsters that plague her pueblo? I'm gonna say that wrong. I'm so sorry. But these days, her father wants her out of town with a husband of his choosing. That's not happening. Carolina plans to show everyone that she'd make a better vampire slayer than a wife. But when she runs into a sediento that is not only handsome, but kind, she questions everything. Lalo Villa Lobos, I'm butchering these, I'm so sorry, doesn't act on impulses. As the eldest of two, his duties were to carry on the family business, marry and have children, but then he's turned into a sediento and must flee the city, taking lives as he goes north where he believes the first vampire was made. Surely the Pueblo there will have answers to reverse the curse or end sedientos altogether. Another unexpected turn, Lelo runs right into the beautiful young woman who'd gladly stake him. Fortunately, mostly for him, they share a common enemy they can stop these evil beasts together. And if along the way they discover what it is to truly live and love, then they'll have one anyway. This does say it's YA, but I love vampires. We're in the era of vampires, in my opinion. And I'm trying to pick up like every vampire story I see because I'm a vampire girly and I wanna read the good ones so badly. And this one intrigues me. I think the cover looks really interesting. I don't even like reds, but the way it's done, it just, I really like it for some reason. Those are my anticipated releases for October, November, December. I'd love to know if you have any down below. And just in case you missed it, and you would like to check some more out, I'll leave my summer anticipated releases. This covers July, August, and September. And if you're not feeling chatty, leave me a balloon emoji in the comments down below and have yourselves an absolutely remarkable day.